I'd like to speak today about how God hears you and what does he listen from you and what empowers you to be able to reach God's ear. You know, the prayer that we bring before the Father is important and it has to be continual. God is looking for a daily walk with him that is in constant communication with him. So we don't follow our own directions. He wants us to be instructed by the Holy Spirit continually. And if we're listening to him continually, we're going to complete his will in our life. Why do you think that God answers some people but doesn't answer other people when they pray? Well, some people have no connection to God through Jesus Christ. You know, people in the world use the terms, I'm going to pray for you, or I'll pray for that situation. But if they do not have a relationship with Jesus Christ, God isn't hearing them. Jesus tells us that there is only but one mediator between God and man, and it's him. God will not hear the prayer of those that have not accepted his son, because they are prayers of a sinner. The only prayer he wants to hear is, I repent of my sins. I need a savior. Please have Jesus come into my heart. And that will begin that journey of walking with God. But if you're a child of God and you're recognizing that not all your prayers are being answered, these are some of the things you have to understand about that communication. The first thing you need to know is God searches your heart. He knows what you're praying for and what you're thinking about when you're asking for these things. And this is a determination as to how and to what extent he'll answer that prayer. In Jeremiah 17.10, we're told, I, the Lord, search the heart. I try the reins, even to give every man according to his ways and according to the fruit of his doings. God will search every heart. And in Hebrews 4.12, we're told, God is a discerner of the thoughts and intents of the heart. You know, God knows how you think, what you intend to do with your life. He tests you to see if you'll follow instruction. So before you go to God in prayer, you need to understand how much he already knows. Yet Jesus tells us in Luke 18, 1, that men ought to always pray and don't grow tired. You know, we're always to be in communication with the Father. I believe because he wants to see if you know as much about your heart as he does. When you know as much about your own heart as he does, God can use you. We reveal it to him when we speak or pray. This is why we pray, because he finds and forms those hearts, and then he empowers them, because they reflect the image of his son. Remember, the Bible tells you, from the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks, and he responds to those people that are empowered by his Holy Spirit through prayer immediately. James 5.16 says, The effectual fervent prayer of a righteous man produces much. James knew a little bit about fervent prayer. In the next verse, he describes the righteous. Verse 17 says, Elias was a man subject to like passions as we are, and he prayed earnestly that it would not rain, and it didn't rain for three years. You know, God hears the passionate prayers of those that continue in communication with him. James says God looks for an effectual, fervent prayer from those that are right with him. The first thing you need to know is God listens closely to godly, and he hears the cries of unsaved, but he will not hear you if you hide sin in your heart. Psalm 66, 18 says, If I regard iniquity in my heart, the Lord will not hear me. Unconfessed sin puts a separation between you and your father. He won't hear you. And if you continue in sin, God says you provoke him to anger. It's described in Ezekiel 8.18. Even though they cry in my ears with a loud voice, yet I will not hear them. Without your repentance of sin, your prayers will stop at the ceiling and go no further. Jeremiah 8.6 says, I listened and heard, God says, but they spoke not right. No man repented of his wickedness. They say, what have I done? Everyone turned to his own way. You know, when God says you're not speaking right, it means you've not repented. And it says it again in Job 42.8. 
and my servant Job will pray for you. For him I will accept prayer, lest I deal with you after your foolishness. In that you have not spoken to me the right thing, God tells Job's religious friends that he won't hear from them. They must go to Job and give Job a sacrifice and he will pray for them. And God tells them from Job only will I accept, otherwise I'll deal with your foolishness. Their foolishness was speaking for God when God did not speak to them. This is what religious people do. They want so bad to be right that they throw a bunch of advice out there and say, here, you pick one. Anytime someone uses a lot of words for one simple truth found in God's word, they're misleading you. And like Job, you should ignore that advice. So what can cause God to hear you the way Job had God's ears? We're told in Psalm 1017, Lord, you have heard the desire of the humble. You have prepared their hearts. They will cause your ear to hear. That is the desire of the humble. God says they desire to be last. And in Mark 9.35, Jesus sits down with his disciples and says, To them, if any man desires to be first, that person will have to be last of all and servant of all. There's the perfect description of the humble. If you want to grab the closest spot to God's ears, you will have to consider yourself last of all and servant of all. We're told in Psalms that God has an inclination to listen to the desires of the humble. Then he also prepares their hearts. He will develop the hearts of the humble to be servants. This is how we are told in Mark 9.35 how we become first in God's book and closest to his ears. Matthew 11:29 tells us, Take my yoke upon you and learn of me, for I am meek and lowly of heart. This is Jesus' description of himself. And it is interesting that in Psalms 10, 17, we're told he looks for the hearts of the humble and through the love relationship, he prepares their hearts so they can be lifted up to a new level where he hears them all of the time. Psalms 116 says, I love the Lord because he has inclined his ear to me. Therefore, I will call upon him as long as I live. You know, the humble have learned not to complain. They approach God with supplications. Supplications are always followed up with thanksgivings. They'll thank God beforehand for all that he intends to do in answering their supplications. You know, there's another way that will cause God to hear you, and it's not a good way, and I don't recommend it, and it's complaining. Numbers 11.1 1 says, When the people complained, it displeased God, and the Lord heard it, and his anger was kindled. This kind of action is the way of the ungodly, and he does not want this from his own children. Jude verse 16 says, The ungodly are described as murmurers or complainers walking after their own lusts. The children of Israel were behaving as ungodly. They wanted to return to slavery because the food there was better. See, God did hear them. And what was God's response? In Hebrews 3.11, he says, So I swore in my wrath they will not enter my rest. So they did not enter his rest because God heard them complaining. If you think complaining is a form of prayer, that's probably why you're restless. You need to learn that in order for you to be heard by God, you will need to approach him as his son did. Matthew eleven twenty nine 29 describes, Jesus says, I am meek and lowly of heart. Now notice the comparison of Psalm ten seventeen. God says, I've heard the desire of the humble, which is meek, and I have prepared their hearts. This is almost identical to Matthew eleven twenty nine. It's a beautiful description of one who God will listen to. And Psalms continues, they can cause my ear to hear. That's how you get God to respond immediately through meekness and humility. And in Matthew, Jesus says, if you take on my likeness, meek and lowly of heart, my Father will listen to you, and he will give you rest for your souls. What a wonderful trait. 
He'll listen to you and you'll find rest. And I know if you're a prodigal son, you have no rest. You're on the road. You're away from the father. You've communicated nothing to him. And he loves you and misses you deeply. He wants to be able to move in your life again. But you'll have to make a move towards him. He's ready to receive you. But you'll have to confess and repent the lifestyle you've been living. I hope you'll do this. This is food that I provided to my family for years. I want to now provide it to you. I hope you'll share it with a friend. If you like it, I'll provide more. Thank you for listening, and God bless you.